So we've got this shape here that we need to router out. It's a little mini mouse door, pretend mouse door. Um, where did I, I've already done one freehand. There we go. This one was pretty simple. I used my combination square with a router and ran it off the combination square. It's giving me the square lines and the fence on the little router trimmer. There you go, I've taken the fence off at the moment, the, the plates. But it's this three mil bits that I'm using. There's the plate for it up there. Um, but it was a bit tricky to do the curve by hand. I managed it and it looks okay. I think once it's filled and sprayed and sanded. This is the external part of the frame as well, so you don't see this mouse door as much. But there is a fake mouse door in the frame as well, which is there. So that's gonna be on show because in the middle of this frame is the writing with the, the light shining through it. Um, so I'm not even gonna attempt to route that by hand. Um, it's taken me about 10 hours to get to this point, um, machining all these components and mitering them, biscuiting them, spindling them, table saw, all that sort of stuff to get them to this point, all the filling, the sanding. Um, so I'm not prepared to mess one up. Um, I did struggle a little bit, like I said, on this side to get the sandpaper in there and clean the edges up and give it a nice round edge, take the arises off without ruining the face. So I'd come up with a plan and what I've done is I've worked out the shape of the door that I actually wanted. There we go, that is the shape that I want. And then I worked out the, the size from the edge of the router, the trimmer, to the start of the cutter, which I think was 42 mil. That was easy on the square part, so I've come across 42 mil, 42, 42. But the curve was tricky. Knowing that this radius, this circle is a 42 mil circle, I came in 21 mil, 21, 21. Obviously that's the center of the circle, if that was an imaginary circle. That gave me the center line of where to swing the router from. Um, and then obviously that is the tip. I need to come 41 mil, or was it 41, 42, what I just said, just like the rest. So I set my router up to that point to start here. I've made myself up, well, I made one of these ages ago, about five years ago, I found it. Something to swing the um, trimmer on. So I fixed that to the trimmer like so. So I put that back in just for now. I screwed this sense point onto there. Just not too tightly, just so it can still swing. Put my router on and then I just swung it, swung it. And the router cutter followed that and then I just stopped it where it hit the straights. Right, so I'm gonna show you how it actually works. Have a look here. I did another test run and it worked out perfectly. Um, this on a bit of six mil birch, but it's basically a bigger version of that and it's running off this edge. So I'm gonna unplunge it, get it into position. I may have to stop it once or twice because I've got a square edge, so I'm gonna have to stop it, spin it so that the square edge doesn't hit. Okay, so get it in place, turn it on. And I'm gonna punch it. There we go. I might not have to turn it off, I can just turn the router. So the square part doesn't hit the template. Can you still see? I'll go around and see if it's all right. be taking my time on the next one but that is ultimately what we need to try and achieve on the rebate so that's what we're gonna go ahead and do now so I need to figure out a way of getting this template now onto the actual workpiece get it clamped down on an uneven surface and for my router to run on a flat surface underneath um, that's my next challenge 
Um, going to be tricky. Got to make it work though, because this is the only way I have to do it. I don't have a CNC machine. Right, so I'm ready to rattle this one, or near, nearly. I uh, just need to clamp it down. But let me just take it all up and show you what I've done. So the router needs to run. We made this piece of 6mm, which is flush with the, or slightly higher than the rebate. Let me lift this up. We've packed it up. We've just used this timber because it's the same height as this. And we've packed it up so when we put this whole piece down, it is, like I said, just past this. So the router's got something to slide on. Um, and what I've done is I've worked out this line here is in line with this line. So then I need to just mark the same line on this um, this piece here and it lines up here, can you see? Two lines. And then all I had to do is come across 41 mil to the start because that is where it's 40 mil, 41 mil back to the start of this. Um, and then I also worked out the center. So I measured from the edge of the lip to the center of the door. Um, and I transferred that line onto this lip and then I got my scent onto this, sorry, onto this piece of MDF. Found the center line of this opening and then all I need to do is line up the center lines and put it on my 41 mil line. There we go, so that one's lined up. It's also lined up with a 41 mil line there. And that one needs to move over a tiny bit. There we go. Let's make sure this is over against the fence. So I think we're nearly there. All we need to do is clamp it down. So the router has got this surface to run off. Like we've cut this hole out obviously because we need to route her into the actual timber. The router cutter will sail past the hole, um, the centre hole, and this top piece is what the external part of this ring is going to run off. And the reason it's 41 mil, I keep on saying 41 mil, is because it's 41 mil from this edge to the start of the cutter. So Sean's going to clamp that down. We've got a solid board here underneath. So we're going to put a nice big clamp to squeeze all that together as a sandwich to this. And then we've only got one go at this. If we get it wrong, I'm gonna to have to fill it because I can't make another piece. It's gonna take another 10 hours. The idea is not to get it wrong. So, Sean, clamp those up for us and we'll get going. So that's fine, we've got that nice and tight. Yeah, should work nicely. And you can still see the outline of the little mouse door that we're trying to follow. Um, these are the two test pieces. This was the second test piece and it worked out lovely. So that is what we should achieve here. Right, trimmers there, we're gonna get it in place and we're gonna unplunge it so we can just, so let's unlock it, slide it forward so nothing's poking through, none of the cuts poking through. Get that into position. There you go, see it can slide on the piece that we've just made and the external part of the router is running along the top template. Right, so there we go, it's in position up against the edge. I'm gonna turn it on and once it's turned on, I'm gonna plunge it down to the two mil depth into the timber and then hopefully just follow it around very slowly. Sean will hopefully get a nice view of it. I'm gonna lock it. Take my time on it. Thank you. 
in there. I don't want to risk taking it out once it's moving and ruining it. Yeah. That's why I like woodworking. This is the bit I enjoy. I mean, wardrobes not so much because you do the same thing over and over. But when it comes to things, making templates up to fit. There we go. Let's get the brush and brush it out. We have made it slightly off center of this space. This is the void. The glass is going here. There we go. So imagine the glass is going there, the front of the frame. Middle backing, I call it. This is gonna be made out of um, birch and it's gonna have CNC letters in it. Light is in this part, shining through the letters. Um, but like I said, there's four mil glass going up against this. This is why this is slightly bigger, this margin, than this margin. By the time I get the glass in, I want it to still look centre. There you go. I didn't get the brush, but I mean, it looks a little bit wonky because the lines and the pencil lines, it's there or thereabouts. Once I sand it up, it should be absolutely fine. Great. So now we can clean that up and prepare for gluing. So hopefully see you in that one, guys. Ciao.